This conference will now be recorded. Well, hello, friends. Welcome to APS Stamp Chat. My name is Heidi. Thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate you coming to Stamp Chat Live at 7 o'clock on a Wednesday. I hope that you've enjoyed a beautiful day. And now it's the time to stimulate your mind and also unwind with the some philately APS members. I'd like to thank you for your support, for joining the call. Um, your membership in the APS organization is so valuable. It's 134 years of goodwill and camaraderie, and um, that speaks volumes to the hobby that we're all a part of, that we have this long-standing tradition. And you know, 134 years, that's a long, that's a lot of events in human history, and uh, it bodes very well for the strength, the determination, and the evolution of this hobby. So thank you, APS members, for your support, and we hope that you'll continue to build membership by recruiting others. And many of us are recruiting, especially those who have chosen to be presenters on the APS Live Stamp Chat, because after all, I was thinking, how many presenters are APS members? And tonight we have one of those members. This is Enrique Cetaro. He's from Hollywood, Florida. He is an APS member down in South Florida. Tonight he'll be talking about Great Britain, pre decimal currency, and stamps. And that's a really fascinating topic to think about how stamps and excuse me and currency you know are parallel in in nature and. And we'll understand uh, at a greater depth, obviously, by the time the, this presentation is, is through. So before we go into the presentation, I'd just like to put some housekeeping. If you have uh, questions or comments, go ahead and put them in the chat box. If you'd prefer not to ask them live yourself, just go ahead and private message me and then I'll, I'll read your comment or your inquiry, all right? So otherwise, I'll moderate that chat box. I'll call your name, give you a few moments to unmute your mic, and uh, you can go ahead and talk with Mr. Cetaro. So with that, okay. uh, I'd like to thank okay. you very much, Mr. Well, Cetaro, for joining us, and uh, thank you. Good Thanks, uh, Katie. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm calling from here from Florida. Uh, we're going to talk about the pre-decimal system before the decimalization in 1971. Uh, we're going to talk about the stamps, of course. Uh, we're going to also uh, put a reference uh, the coins and uh, and the bank notes or white notes, as we call it. Uh, here we show the penny black. Uh, this was it was called the bank note uh, before. Uh, excuse me, a white note. It was a, a white piece of paper, something like uh, our current uh, cashier check. That was uh, prepared by the Bank of England in uh, various denominations, and then uh, later on in 1928, the Bank of Note, uh, Bank of England, started issuing the banknotes, uh, like we have it currently now. Uh, in the 12th century, uh, one of the kings in England established uh, the new uh, uh, currency system. It was uh, one pound, was 20, sh 20 shillings one shilling, 12 pence, and there was 240 uh, pennies or pence to a pound. Uh, we're going to see, I put here, things are not as they seem is because even if the, these new systems were being implemented, some of the things of the old system was be used, being used for various reasons. We're going to talk about that. And here in red and in the different slides, we're going to put the names of the of the of the notes, for example, the shilling or the pound, uh, how it was uh, called in the slang, and some of these uh, notes numbers uh, denominations were also used in the common language. So, uh, Haiti, next slide, please. Haiti, next slide. So, uh, no, no, uh, slide number two. Okay, leave it there. Uh, so the uh, there was a no. Yeah, your first your okay. your first slide. Yeah. Uh, the guinea was a coin uh, number two. Leave it there. It was a coin that was uh, originally came from gold from the uh, British guinea, 
uh, and that was in the started in the 1600s. I think we're on this one. And that yeah. was called Guinea because it came from there. And there were uh, in that time there were uh, they uh, in the 12th 12, 12, um, 12th century they established the the new the currency system of a uh, pound shillings and and pence. Uh, but in uh, the the paper currency did not occur until the 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 trees from India from China they had created a, a pulp paper and they used from the trees and they uh, where the trade started occurring between England and the uh, Far East they brought uh, the the paper uh, pulp and they started issuing the the white notes. And when the, there was only coins before the paper, there were uh, gold coins, uh, half a guinea coins, uh, silver coins, and other metals also. And uh, originally the the guinea was equivalent to one pound, but then the, as the gold became more uh, exp uh, scarce, it was changed to one pound and one shilling. One guinea was equal to one pound and one shilling. And here you can see the on the left uh, a gold coin of uh, one guinea and half a guinea. Next slide, please, Katie. Uh, so in 1155, they introduced Henry the II. It's not me. It's Henry the Second introduced the. Uh, the currency system. There were gold, basically gold, silver coins, and other metals. Uh, then they, in 1663, they introduced the guinea, and uh, uh, Bank of England, um, in addition to coins, started uh, uh, printing the uh, the white notes. And then in 1928, the bank notes. Mm -hmm. In 1971, the old system was replaced with the decimal of one pound and a hundred pence. I can see here at the at the right the top one is a, a, 50, a 50 pound white note and then underneath is a five pound uh, bank note. Next slide please. Uh, here's an example for example in 1946 uh, in a theater you would see the price of uh, admission. Uh, the, the private boxes was uh, one pound and 17 shillings to seven pounds. The stalls are 16 shillings and six pounds and so forth. The next slide, please. Uh, the, uh, underneath the, the, the pence, there was a a coin called the one farthing, and there was there were four farthings to a pence. It was called the mag. There are no Great Britain stamps with farthings, but uh, some of the colonies uh, issued stamps with farthings because of the much lower uh, rates. There's an interesting thing about the farthing. Uh, in 1946, after the World War II, the lower class were really very very tough living. Uh, because of the of the the war, the bombardment of London, and you know, all the country, so the, the government established a, a subsidy to the lower class that was six shillings a week, and then they increased this to eight shillings a week. Uh, and in these families that uh, received this uh, bonus, uh, the kids would receive uh, a daily allowance of two farthings. And with that, they could buy uh, a candy or a loaf of bread with honey. In 1955, there was a movie. It was called The Kid for Two Farthings. If you're, you're interested, you can find it on YouTube, The Kid for Two Farthings. The next slide, please. <clears throat> then we come with half a penny, very common in the British uh, area. It's called Hey Penny. And strangely here, uh, why are they called two farthings? Why is it half a penny? <laughs> but that's it. That's how it is. 
And we see here uh, Queen Victoria have a penny and uh, George V have a penny and the coin. Uh, number seven, Haiti. Uh, one penny, the famous uh, penny black. Uh, we see the, at the lower right, uh, one penny of Edward VII and one penny coin in, in probably in copper. It was called the copper. Number eight, please, Haiti. Uh, the sheets of uh, penny black was 240 stamps, 12 uh, uh, rows by 20, uh, 12, 20 rows by 12 columns. And the reason why is uh, one column would be one shilling. And then we see uh, a partial penny black uh, stamp sheet and uh, 175 anniversary of the penny black. Number nine, please. Then we have the two pence called a two copper of okay, um, Queen Victoria, Edward the seventh and uh, two pound uh, coin. Number 10, please. Uh, two and a half pence, uh, there, were, there were stamps of Queen Victoria, Edward the Seventh, George the Fifth. There were no coins of two and a half pence, but there was a coin of one thirtieth of a shilling that is more or less similar to the two and a half uh, pence. Number 11. <laughs> Uh, we have a three pence, we call the Joey, uh, Queen Victoria, Edward the Seventh, and the coins, Queen Victoria of three pence. Number 12. <clears throat> Haiti, number 12. Six pence, also called the tenor, uh, at both uh, the two kings, the Queen Victoria and the coin of six pence. Number 13. One shilling is called the Bob, Queen Victoria, Edward, uh, George V, and uh, one shilling a coin. Number 14, please. Two shillings uh, is called two Bob bits. There was also a coin of one florin equivalent to uh, uh, two shillings, but the uh, stamps only were printed in two shillings version, not in one florin. Uh, number 415. Uh, two shillings uh, and six pence. Also half a crown uh, because the crown was five shillings and it was, no, 15, leave it back. And it was also called a half a dollar. Now in the in the center, you can see a, a, a seahorse, two shillings and six pence, and underneath it says half a crown. Uh, and then here at the right, you see the Queen Victoria uh, half a crown coin. Uh, the next slide, please, 16. Uh, the, here's the, the florin. Uh, there's no stamps for the florin. It was equivalent to two shillings. And you have the coins there. Number 17. Uh, one crown is five shillings. Uh, also call a dollar. Now here's the strange thing is the, the seahorse of five shillings. It says five shillings. doesn't say one crown. Huh? So something different what we, we would expect. And we see also a Queen, a King uh, Edward the Seventh stamp and a coin of one shilling, five shillings, uh, or one crown. This is five shillings. It's number seventeen. <clears throat> then they have the ten shillings. Uh, it's called two dollars or two crowns. 
10 shilling Edward the seventh, uh, Queen Victoria, George the fifth, and we have a 10 shilling banknote. This is, is uh, after 1928. <clears throat> Number 19. One pound uh, was called was called a quid, uh, and uh, it was one one pound uh, twenty shillings. It was, also was called a sovereign, and there were gold coins, uh, stamps of Queen Victoria, uh, George V, and uh, the first uh, banknote of one pound of the reign of George V. Uh, number nine, 20. Uh, let's go back to a guinea. Uh, remember, it's uh, one pound, one shilling. Uh, it's called Yellow Boy. And the strange thing is, even if the, the last coins were printed in the 1700s or early 1800s, it was used very extensively uh, as a... Um, sign of a uh, uh, something honorific uh, pe people who would buy properties land auction arts uh, stamp collections uh, would would uh, deal in guineas even if there were no paper currencies of guineas but uh, for example if somebody bought a property let's say I don't know a uh, hundred thousand uh, guineas, then the 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 seller would get a hundred thousand uh, pounds, and the difference would be the auctioneer's commission. The same thing would happen with the uh, stamp collections. Uh, even also, uh, when you get a, a tailor to make a suit, he would uh, charge you so many uh, guineas. <coughs> So it says everything that a gentleman would buy was, was expressed in guineas. And this was used even until 1971. When they started with the decimalization, it was changed. Okay, number 21. Uh, another thing is, uh, go back to number 20. Uh, in... Uh, when the, uh, the um, machine stamps, the one one pound and zero five pence is the international rate. It, curiously, it's uh, equivalent to what a, a guinea would be in the decimal currency, and we can see a bat on the top with the same uh, rate. Twenty one. <clears throat> Uh, here's a banknote of 1792 uh, of one pound, one shilling will be equivalent to a guinea. That's the only case that we've found a very old uh, uh, banknote. Or you would see yellow note <laughs> because of the color of the paper. 22. Um, here's an example of an ad of a stamp uh, dealer that sells a collection, stamp collection in 500 guineas, huh? equivalent to 525 pounds. Uh, 23. <laughs> well, let's skip this slide. We already talked about these things. 24. <laughs> Uh, in uh, the reign of Queen Diane, uh, in front of the city of uh, Port of Vigo, uh, there was several uh, British ships that attacked uh, a Spanish galleon, and they took all the gold and precious metals. And with that gold, they printed, they melted them and printed five guinea coins that had the inscription of Vigo. So they they're not uh, they're really sharing that they 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 got this money from the Vigo uh, battle. Uh, next uh, slide twenty five. Uh, in two thousand thirteen, there was a, st a 
current uh, coin of two pounds to commemorate the, the guinea. Uh, a coin commemorating another coin. 26. <clears throat> uh, here's some uh, guinea stamps of the regional uh, values of regional stamps. Number 27. Uh, two pounds, uh, we have the castles, the Queen uh, Elizabeth, uh, it was called two quid. And there's uh, also uh, a revenue stamp of consular service of two, two pounds and a two pound coin. Uh, number 28, <laughs> uh, five pounds uh, called a fiver or a jack. Uh, we have all the variations, the uh, Queen Victoria, uh, the, bank note, the white notes, the bank notes, and the coins. And 29. Uh, well, here we have the, the in 2000, I think it's uh, this year, in February, they issued a, a paper polymer banknote that has a transparent uh, background and uh, Queen Elizabeth on the front and uh, uh, George uh, Winston Churchill on the back. Uh, 30, number 30. The 10 pound is called a tenor or a crockle. Uh, there's uh, only one stamp of Great Britain, uh, the Britannia of 1993, uh, with 10 pounds. Uh, there's some stamps of the colonies. Uh, we can see uh, a white note and a bank note and the uh, coins. Uh, 31. 20. From here on, there are no, there's no stamps, uh, but uh, 20 pounds is called a score. And we can see the bank note, the white note, and uh, uh, 20 pound coin. 32, uh, it's called a pony, 25 pounds. And also we can see uh, white notes were issued between one pound and 1,000 pounds or any denomination you wanted as a, a normal cashier check. You could have it prepared to buy, pair anything you wanted. Uh, so this is a pony, uh, number 33. <laughs> 33 it was called half a ton because a ton was 50, 100 pounds. And there's one stamp of 50 pounds that is a revenue stamp for consular service. And you can see a 50 pound banknote and a 50 pound gold coin. 34, 100 pounds called a ton. You have a banknote, uh, a coin. And for example, if you uh, wanted to express uh, in common language 380 pounds, that would be four tons, 20 down. Mm -hmm. uh, number 35. These are 500 and 1,000 pounds, and they were called the grand and the big one. And we can see a stamp of 20, 210 pounds uh, as a revenue stamp for a foreign bill and two white notes of 500 and 1,000 pounds. 36, I think the, we're almost done. So this is this is about it. There's no one million pound magno. This is just a fant fantastic uh, thing. Any left. <laughs> Excellent. Are you finished, Enrique? Yeah, I finished, yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought. All right. Uh, really, the 10 pound uh, stamp uh, was used mainly for um, uh, par large parcel posts, uh, rarely used on covers. There's only first day covers for the 50 pound. And it was also excessively used for. Uh, 
revenue applications. The stamps you can found with a, a CDS called the circular date system uh, is uh, stamps from uh, large parcel posts or you can found in combination with uh, multiples blocks or strips of two and three and so on the stamps to complete uh, the rate. There was not a, a specific postal rate for that. Uh, the question of uh, Jeffrey, I'm not sure I understand. Let me see. Uh, the names came from the slang, and it was also adopted uh, in the common language. I don't know why it did happen like that. Thanks. Wow, well, I don't know. <laughs> wow, you're moderating yourself. I, I really didn't even have to show up. This, this is nice. <laughs> I just had to press slide by slide. Yeah, no. Uh, I don't see, unless anybody would like to ask a question on camera, I'd like to ask you, Enrique, because I'm yeah. always I, I'm, I'm always curious as to your stamp story. Like, why? Why did you get into, why, why this subject? Because I, I I found uh, I remember there was a, a radio program of, of a guy who went to, an American guy who went to England and he went tried to buy a property and they told him he had to bid in guineas and he said how do I pay this so and then I started seeing all these well, I started collecting stamps uh, for example the seahorses the two shillings and sixpence was half a crown but then the the five shilling was not called the crown. All these disparities of the, the, the things that were continued to use the old traditional system because it was very uh, classy to deal in pounds, in guineas and not in pounds. And is, is that still used today, like colloquially? Will, will people... nah, well, the, yeah, the, the, the quid is a, typically a, a, a pound and the and the bob is a shilling. Well, not the shilling. The uh, pound is called a uh, quid in the common language. You know. Shilling no longer exists. What happened is when the, in the stamp club, I there's a guy who's actually from England, and he told me when they did the decimalization, what happened is all the things that were expressed in, in very low, like pennies, pence, 10 pence, or like that, were converted to 10 pence in the decimal. But that means that the, the actual value was like double because in the old currency, one pence was 240th of a pound. And in the new system, it was one hundredth of a pound. So all the low value stamp uh, items that you bought went up in price. <laughs> and and where, where do you find most of, you know, do you shop stamp store? Do you shop eBay? Where do I, you I, mean, I buy an eBay, Del Campe, and some dealers. Uh, uh, there's several dealers in the UK specialize in different areas. Uh, also a member of the Great Britain Philatelic Society. And how long have you been, how long has this been your, your area? How long have you been studying this area? Well, I started collecting when I was a kid. A friend of mine, my father had a friend who worked in Geneva, and he brought me a bag full of stamps, and I started collecting there. But uh, more strongly, I started collecting when I moved to the U.S. I was living in Mexico before, uh, first Argentina, then to Mexico, and then in 1992, I came to the U.S. <laughs> And do you do you have other people in your club, uh, Enrique? It's a very that, large club. It's a very large club. It's uh, but does like that, 80. But they'll have that similar interest with the pre decimal. Yeah, a lot of people collect the Great Britain. Yeah, not all we, not all we, but. Uh, but you have some people to talk with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> great. Great. Well, I, I think you filled a void here, Mr. Citarro. I think that Wonderful. When, I think that you satisfied everybody's curiosity. If, if I'm not seeing any chats, I'm going to read the room as such. Bang up job, bravo, Mr. Citarro. Thank you for introducing okay. us. Okay, I'm glad today. you like it. Okay. Uh, yeah, it was great. Mr. Citarro will be back with us 
you know your own date? <laughs> Jeez. Um, I know you'll be back. I can't wait for the talk on June 26th about chocolate. I know. Yeah, you'll chocolate, be chocolate. Yeah. We need to figure out how to put the slides, share the slides from my yeah, side. We can do that. We can do that. But anyway, okay. everyone, okay. thank you so much. You read your comments, Enrique, while okay. I bid everyone adieu so you can see your accolades. Take care, everybody. Yeah. Be safe. <laughs> Be safe, and thank you everyone so much for joining us on APS Stamp Chat again. We really appreciate our members' support. It's, it's, it's your generosity and commitment to Philately and, and, and to this incredibly rich, dynamic, ever-growing, ever-expansive hobby that we are so fortunate to have been gravitated towards and into. So um, thank you so much for your support. Remember, we do have the Adopt-A-Book. If there's a favorite philatelic book that you love, that you can really say, you know, this was a pivoting moment where I I, I changed. Uh, you know, we probably have the book at the APRL. And guess what? For a $50 donation and up, depending on which publication, you can get a nameplate in there and be part of a legacy. Well, you already are as an APS member, but a continued legacy and member and part of the APRL and share that passion because that's what I think that's the heart, the crux of this is uh, expanding our world and our minds and also sharing. Sharing is caring. So thank you so much, friends, for joining us on APS Live Stamp Chat. We, you can find this and every other Stamp Chat on our APS YouTube channel. The playlist is Stamp Chats. And uh, we will have our next Stamp Chat on Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern. Graham Beck creator of Exploring Stamps will be with us. So I hope you'll join the call and invite a friend or two. Again, thank, thank you, Mr. Happy. Hey, Setado, thank you, you for your help. Thanks Please for your help. Your time. So thank you so much. Ciao, everyone. Thank you.